Star Wars Rogue One is an epic space opera film, and the film is about a bunch of rebels who try to get the blueprints for the Empire's new weapon, the Death Star, which contains a weakness to the Death Star, which then leads into the events of Episode 4. Now, don't get me wrong, I like this film, but to me it was underwhelming, and I mean very much underwhelming. Just things about this film bothered me so much. I'll talk about the stuff I liked later, but I'll just get all my gripes out of the way first. Right off the bat, this just didn't feel like Star Wars. And I know it sounds weird, but just, I don't know, just something about it just didn't feel like epic. This just didn't have the Star Wars feel to it. And this film betrays a lot of the stuff that the other films did. Like, there's no opening scroll to this film, so... Yeah, that, that is one major problem right there. Like, every single Star Wars film has always had an opening scroll, and this film doesn't. And that just bothers me. And I know it's not part of the main story, but it's still Star Wars. Star Wars is known for its opening scrolls. And another thing that bothered me was they now show the names of the planets. In all of the Star Wars films, they never show the names of the planets, yet in this one they do. So... Why? Like, we don't need to know the name of the planet. Just let the characters say the name of the planet and we'll understand from there. But no, they have to tell us that, oh, this is the planet. Like, none of the Star Wars films ever did this. Now, let me get into the characters because some of them I actually liked. But man, are these characters thinly done. Just barely any backstory for any of them except for the main female character. And the very little story we get from them, I just didn't care for them. Oh, and by the way, this film uses a lot more comedy than any of the other Star Wars films, and I didn't mind it because it surprisingly worked here. But after a while, I did start to expect jokes to come out of these characters a lot, and that did take me out of the film a little bit. Now I'm going to talk about the visuals, and I don't know, these visuals really didn't amaze me. Just, these just weren't mind-blowing. Like, these visual effects weren't game-changers, but I was expecting something unique and, you know, different, and... It was just dull. And unlike episode 7 where they did a good mix of visual and practical effects, this one I feel like they went all visual for and it, it kind of shows. And something I did like for a little bit was the little nods and references to episode 4, but after a while these just became tiresome and kind of boring. And near the end they just started shoving these in down your throat and I was just getting sick of this because they really wanted to put that point across that oh episode 4 is next, episode 4 is next, like we friggin know. Just stop shoving it down our necks. We know episode 4 is coming up next. Just let us focus on these characters here. Now I know you may be wondering why am I hating on this film so much. I really don't hate it. I just think it's underwhelming, but now I'm going to get into what I really liked in this film. And first off, the music is friggin' amazing. And it's not John Williams. It the music is actually composed by Alexander Desplat, who composed the Oscar winning score for the Grand Budapest Hotel. And he also did the score for the final two Harry Potter films. And this music was so good, it was easily memorable. And I could go on and on about the score, but it is incredible. In fact, I think this score rivals the score of John Williams' scores in all of the Star Wars films. And for those who saw the trailer, you know Darth Vader is in this film, and when he's on screen, oh boy is he intimidating. And like, this was the best part, because it's been a long time since we've seen Darth Vader on screen, and like, I was intimidated by his presence. Because every time he was on screen, it felt like he was Hannibal Lecter, because just like, he was that intimidating. And in my opinion, I think this is the most depressing Star Wars film to ever come out, and... And when you see the ending, you will know why. But like I said earlier, all my gripes are there. The characters are fair, not well told out, the film is a bit rushed, the editing can be a bit hit and miss at points. But all the good stuff equals it out. The music is good, Darth Vader's appearance is good. The battle scenes are good, and I'm going to give Star Wars Rogue One a 6.5 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, be sure to like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to my channel below. As always, I'm Nenix5. Thank you so much for watching.